Enteric hypoxuria is a medical term built from two words. Enteric stands for the intestine, and hypoxuria means there's an increased concentration of oxalate in the urine. So the source of the increased concentration of oxalate in the urine is from the intestine, or as we as medical professionals refer to it, enteric. Enteric hypoxaluria is not a genetic cause. And that's the distinction from primary hypoxaluria, which is a genetic cause that leads to more oxalate because of a genetic cause that leads to overproduction of oxalate from the liver. Now in enteric hypoxaluria, it's a bit more difficult because it describes different causes from the intestine that cause the increased concentration of oxalate in the urine. Examples include, for example, small bowel resection, that means that a piece of the intestine has been removed. And secondary to this removal, there's increased absorption from the intestine of oxalate. Also, certain surgical procedures that are used to, for example, for weight loss, can also lead to enteric hypoxaluria because there's overabsorption of oxalate. In addition to that, there are other diseases that may affect, for example, the pancreas, and they have then secondary to that malabsorption. And this malabsorption can also lead to enteric hypoxaluria. So most often these patients present with kidney stones. And on further evaluating the medical history, we find out that they have disorders of the intestine. So by asking these questions about their history and by finding out that they have intestinal diseases that I've just mentioned, this leads basically to the diagnosis that the combination of the increased oxalate in the urine and the kidney stones in combination with diseases of the intestine basically makes the diagnosis. If we have the suspicion that a patient has enteric hypoxaluria, we then measure oxalate concentration in the urine. So to give you an example, most often when I see these patients in clinic, they will present with kidney stones that are very often recurrent. And upon asking them, it turns out that they have intestinal diseases that I've mentioned earlier. So in order to make the diagnosis, I will make a 24-hour urine collection. So patients get a urine container and collect urine for 24 hours and subsequently return the urine sample to the doctor and we will send it to the laboratory. And in the urine sample, we will measure the oxalate concentration. And then we can see whether oxalate is in fact increased in the urine and that will help us to make the diagnosis. The most important thing to know is kidney stones are a chronic disease. And it is very important to get at the reason why the stones are built in the first place. Many times we see that patients come again and again with kidney stones, but the reason why they are formed the kidney stones has not been evaluated. So it's very important to get at the source of why the stone is built in the first place. And it's important because we can then try to direct treatment to prevent recurrence of kidney stones in the future. 